Let me start off by saying this. If you were able to actually sit through all three hours of Raw this week, props to you. Because God knows, I don't know why you would do that to yourself, and I don't know how you were able to bring yourself to do it. And if you actually found yourself at least mildly, if not more than mildly, entertained by this week's show, then really major props to you, because I don't know how the hell you could enjoy this shit, and I don't know why the hell you would enjoy this shit. I, paybacks on Sunday. You would think that this company would be able to put on a decent show to build up towards one of their special events on their network that means so much to the company. And, you know, I say this from my own standpoint, is thank God we've got the NBA playoffs right now. I can't believe I'm saying that, watching that pussy shit. Because at least I had something to divert my attention away from Raw this week. I mean, the, the formatting is so stale. The shit they do is so repetitive. There's so many things they do with these characters that are so incredibly ridiculous and pointless and way off the mark and way out of freaking touch and way too damn little, way too damn late. And watching this shit is a chore. And it actually got to the point where it wasn't me flipping to the NBA playoffs during, let's say, a commercial, it was me flipping to Raw in a lot of cases when I decided to take a break from a moment watching the NBA playoffs or when the playoffs were on a commercial. It was that bad. It really was. I don't see how anybody can enjoy this shit at this point. I just don't. You know, like I look at the promos on this week's show. You've got the depression that comes along with Daniel Bryan's announcement that he's going to be surrendering the IC title because he can't wrestle now. Who the hell knows when he can wrestle, if he can wrestle again. This is the guy that WrestleMania 30 was built off of the back of. This is the guy that so many of you wanted to main event WrestleMania 31 against Brock Lesnar. Because, yeah, taking one of those German suplexes would have been a real swell idea. And now here you go, one of the few guys that can actually matter, one of the few guys people actually give a real legitimate shit about, and now he's going to be off TV for God knows how long until they figure out something to do with him, hopefully in the non-wrestling role. It just kind of sets the tone for so many things. But then you look at the other promos. Here's Triple H opening the show, as the authority so often does. Whee! And of course... The whole thing is revolving around Kane and Seth Rollins. Oh my god, put me out of my misery right fucking now. What happened to promos that were actually good? What happened to promos that were actually entertaining? What happened to promos that didn't totally and completely suck and just suck 15 minutes of life force out of your life and out of the show? Because that's exactly what the fuck this opening promo did. Oh, daddy's home, ugga. Well, if you're daddy, then maybe you need to be taken behind the woodshed and have your ass beat because you're the one that clearly is responsible for this shit. I wouldn't be calling myself daddy over any of this shit. This isn't an abortion even from a WWE standpoint. Holy Christ. Oh, whoopee! Dean Ambrose, the hometown guy, is going to take on J&J &J Security. Yay! We'll talk more about Ambrose in a moment. And then, of course, John Cena and his open challenge. You get a dumb dick promo from him, building up to a match with Rusev on Sunday that we all know how it's going to go down. We all know how this is going to finish. Why the fuck this feud is continued? Why the fuck anybody would even classify this as a rivalry is beyond explanation to me. Is beyond comprehension to me. Cena's beat the guy twice in a row now. There's no more reason. There's no more purpose. And frankly, the way they've built this up post-WrestleMania, they've already moved on from Rusev, so why the fuck are they even bothering? At least I will say, if anything else, you trot out Neville for the open challenge. He doesn't have to eat the pinfall here. I appreciate that. That was a good thing. But seeing Cena and Rusev, Cena, could you try telling these guys what to do before the fuck they get out there so that way we don't see you talking during the damn match or in this particular case, post-match and the big build-up between you and Rusev? Holy Christ. Another thing. It's just another piece of fodder for John Cena because that's what so many things are about when it comes to the WWE. You've got to justify that prop no matter what. 
But what else do we have on this fucking lame-ass show this week? Apparently Dolph Ziggler now is not only rocking a denim vest that even Canadians would be embarrassed of, a denim vest that looks like it was ripped out of the closet of a teenage girl circa 1996, but he's now rocking fucking guy liner. Guy liner. Guy liner. And this is the guy that so many of you love. He's now rocking guy liner. So that way we can build up to yet another match between him and Sheamus at a pay-per-view. Whoopee! you got Fandango, Fandangoing, like it's 2013. Note to WWE, you may want to actually go with the trend when it's something that actually has a chance of catching on. Like, oh, I don't know, maybe back in 2013 when it seemed to be catching a little bit of legs. It's about two years too fucking late to be doing this shit, isn't it? Especially when you've already buried the guy and you've already made him inconsequential. I know some of you are going to get some real kick out of the thought of Damien Sandow doing another mimicking gimmick character, but I do not. I'm sorry, him and Curtis Axel as the new mega powers just infuriates me. Why do all that shit with Sandow just to go down the imitation route again? And furthermore, furthermore, if we're going to have anybody in the WWE imitating the Macho Man, then couldn't we give Jay Lethal a call? I'm just saying, God knows this show could use some black machismo. And if Ric Flair drunkenly wanted to come out from behind the freaking curtain and have a shouting match and a promo contest with freaking black machismo, then I'm down with that, baby. But the mega powers with a Sandow mania meets the axe. Oh, what the fuck ever. Macho Man Down Madness and freaking Curtis Axel mania. Ooh, no. We put Rowan and Harper back together again. <laughs> Excuse me. And surely this is because the WWE in a couple of weeks had to cap off and culminate on another free month of the WWE Network. They're trotting out Elimination Chamber, not as like its own show or as part of a gimmick of a bigger show, but just as its own kind of special. At least they're giving you two weeks and plus advance notice, unlike what they do with King of the Ring. It was like three days. Bam, here you go. King of the Ring. Fucking special. Just nothing is planned out with this fucking company. And seeing how Rowan and Harper are now just put back together again, you can clearly see that nothing is fucking planned out with this company. And all the while, you're sitting there and you're mocking fucking, what was it? They were mocking Fandango here. Like you're talking about how quickly Fandango's going to job. So on the one hand, you're trying to go back to a trend from two years ago when you totally missed the boat on it, not that it had a lot of legs to begin with. And now you're sitting there and shitting all over the guy, talking about how quickly he's going to get beat, so that when we see these two fucks back together again. Kane versus Roman Reigns should never, ever happen ever again. I don't care what happens or how quickly it's over. The same old diva shit. I don't even need to fucking go there. Instead of doing the same old shit, you actually want to give the divas a chance. Actually give us a fucking story for a change. And no, this is not a goddamn story. You don't even know who the hell to cheer, who the hell to boo, who the hell to think about, who? It's just more of the same pointless filler bullshit. It's like so much of this fucking show is. Absolutely no effort to try and go out of the way to entertain any goddamn buddy. The same old shit involving the tag teams, again, why actually bother to have a story? And no, the New Day being fucking heel now is fucking stupid, because instead of be the New Day truly being the New Day, and being the right type of heels that they needed to be to match the cultural climate of the time, and in particular, for the WWE's needs, they went in a different direction, because that's what stupid fucking people and stupid fucking companies do. It's the same old dumb shit, and nobody's getting any benefit out of it. Period. You've got why. Wyatt and Ryback sitting there toiling with each other because, again, there's no fucking plan for them. There's no good ideas for them. You totally lost your focus on both of these guys, two guys that happen to be pretty over, two guys that can actually probably make you some fucking money. So, you know, why sit there and really try to make a big deal out of them or really try to do something special with them? Just do more of the same old hot garbage bullshit. And then we get to, you know, the big thing of the night uh, is building up towards that four-way match at Payback. Whoopee! You know, Ambrose was good to not on Monday night, and that's fine. 
You know, he's a hometown guy. People wanted to see him, and the company gave it to you. And they had Ambrose standing tall again on Raw to close out the show, and that's fine and good. But what I'm really having trouble figuring out here is why they would bother throwing Ambrose into this match. Why is he there? He really doesn't have that much of a purpose to be there. I mean, you could go with a loose association with Seth Rollins at this point, but that dates back to shit that happened last summer. You know, and now in particular, it's that they went out of their way to make him look so strong the past couple of weeks. It's like they're trying to overcompensate, which makes me think that he's only in there to do the fucking job on Sunday. And if that's the case, then why even fucking bother putting him in the match? You know, it's just, it's so stupid. This whole notion of having to protect guys. Oh, yes, because Orton eating a pinfall would be such a bad thing for him, right? Because, God forbid, Roman Reigns get pinned by somebody because that would be such a shitty thing, right? Especially when you've already got Rollins, your fucking champion, who nobody I don't think could take seriously at this point in time because it's always bitch shit with him. It's always pussy shit. It's always some type of coward crap. And no, don't give me the heel shit, the chicken shit heel shit. It's just shit. At some point in time, you could do some of that stuff, but do enough to actually have the guy be taken seriously. You've got Seth Rollins so obsessed with what's going on with fucking Kane, a guy who could hardly ever win a match anymore, period, against any fucking body. And this is supposed to be your top guy? Oh, Christ almighty. And even still, this whole thing, the way it finished, everybody's hitting their finishing move on Seth Rollins. Whoopee! It seemed like the emphasis and the focus still happened to be on freaking Kane. At this point in time, if this company is going to be so obsessed with fucking Kane, then they just need to hurry up and go there with Seth Rollins and Kane at the next damn pay-per-view. And frankly, at this point in time, they might as well have done it at this fucking pay-per-view too. This show was so god-awful bad. I mean, you can't tell me they try. Because clearly they fucking don't. Whoever's writing these promos should be fired because your promos fucking suck. Whoever produces this show should be fired because your formatting fucking sucks. Whoever pieces together these matches and goes off of this copy, rinse, repeat bullshit needs to be fired because your shit sucks. If you're going to expect somebody like me to sit there and take three hours out of my life every Monday night to watch your shit, then you should give me a reason to fucking want to do that. Instead, I could be sitting there doing push-ups, I could be doing sit-ups, I could take a huge hulk of crap, I could go out for another run. So many other things I could be fucking doing other than watching this shit. Like I said, if you were able to sit through all of this, good for you. If you happen to enjoy it, I don't know how the fuck you could, then really good for you. I wish I could. But I can't. Shit is awful. This whole wrestling business fucking sucks right now. I don't give a damn what company you like or what company you represent. They all suck. That's a fact. Fucking horrible. Idiots deserve the ratings and the piss poor performances they get. Hey. You could sit there and say in some ways that this show is appealing to the hardcore fans that only like fucking wrestling. But even the wrestling that they're getting on the show isn't all that good and so much of it is repeat, repetitive, dumb bullshit. You know, even those nincompoops at some point in time gotta have something else. You gotta give them a little bit more. And you got three hours. You'd think with all that time you would try new things. You would try to do something different. You would actually fucking try it all, period. They most certainly didn't in my mind this week. I don't know how much longer I can watch this shit. I'm being totally honest with you. And if you think that I can't sit there and just cut this shit off at this point, you are sadly mistaken. Because I am getting to that point. When it gets to the point that I'd rather watch the NBA playoffs as opposed to Raw, there's a serious problem. When I'm using Raw as my commercial break filler for the playoffs, there's a real serious problem here. God only knows how bad payback will be on Sunday.